Hey, how's it going YouTube? Um, this is now the third time I have attempted to make this video because for whatever reason, uh, this is, uh, let me actually turn down the gain a little bit here. Cause I noticed in the last one, I was like super loud, but, um, <clears throat> This is not the third like, time I've attempted to make this video because for some reason something everything keeps going wrong. But anyways, basically, the CEO of Robinhood stopped people from being able to buy stocks on their, on their app. And the app is basically designed so that you can... The average person, you know, it's Robinhood. It's supposed to be take from the rich and give to the poor. But in their way, it's like... Uh, even like a poor person can get on here and they can um, invest if they want to without, you know, worrying about being overtaken by the big guy, I guess. And if you've probably kept up with the news at all, you've heard about this GameStop stock and how people have been buying it out because of Wall Street bets saying, hey, we should buy this up because these hedge fund people basically short the stock. And by shorting the stock, essentially, it's like buying a stock for $10 and then waiting for the stock to go down and selling it back for $7. So then they make $3 off of the profit. Like, like they make pro that $3 as a profit. And the consequence to that is that GameStop as a whole and whoever invested in it loses those $3. And that may not make a whole lot of sense. Like it doesn't, it, it's a confusing situation, but what we're, what my, point of this video is to show right here that Chris Como knows what he's talking about. And he actually has the CEO of, of uh, Robin Hood here, Vlad Tenev, this little stream bean looking dude over here. Uh, he's got him on here and he's going to talk to him and ask him, why did you stop the regular person from being able to, to buy stocks if you didn't have any like reason to do so? Like, did you have some billionaire that was losing money that backs you guys that was saying, hey, I'm losing money, do something to stop them? Let's see what he has to say spokesperson of the individual investor and our whole goal as an institution is to enable those customers empower them and give them access to the markets because for the longest time markets have been only accessible to the wealthy and so the entire industry adopted our business model in 2019 and in 2020 um, we added millions of new customers the entire industry added millions of new customers who took advantage of the market rally and became investors for the very first time. So, you know, we had to make a very difficult decision. He makes it sound like it's a bad thing. Uh, a bunch of people started investing in the market all of a sudden. Uh, why? But we in no way... Uh, why? Explain why you had to do it if it wasn't to protect the guys who had shorted uh, the stocks, which are the big hedge funds. How are you helping the little guy investors? Yeah, so like... How is it making to where normal people, like everyday people, can't buy a stock that right now is in huge demand and you can make a lot of money by buying it and then selling it when it gets higher and then making money off of that? Like, they're essentially shorting the market, like the average person is shorting the market and the billionaires don't like it because when they're shorting the market, they're making money. But when other people are shorting the market, they're losing money. And that's a problem when billionaires start losing money, right? Well, I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100% clear. That's not what he asked. See, he's saying he's like playing a little little politician game here where you circumvent the question. And he says, he said, why did you do that? Why did you stop people from being able to buy GameStop stock? And he's like, well, you know, I don't know why people keep saying like these, that there are other companies and other places that, uh, that told us to do this. No, no one's saying that. This decision was not made on the direction of any market maker or uh, other market participants. Yeah, you made this so why'd decision. You decision. Why'd you do it? Why'd you do it? Robinhood, uh, as a brokerage, has lots of financial requirements, SEC requirements. We have to put up money at clearing houses. The amount of money that we have to put up depends on market volatility. Let me push it forward here a little bit because... Fools. But that's exactly and what's a question now. we're doing everything in our power to turn it back on as soon as prudent. But that's the thing, is that the trust is in question, because it seems like the only people who were getting hurt were the big shots. And that if they were benefiting from this, your small investors now believe that you wouldn't have shut down the game. And just one thing without getting in the weeds uh, here. You don't control 
the listing venue for GameStop. Now, I used to work in finance, so I know this stuff, but the audience doesn't need to. The New York Stock Exchange does. So if anybody was going to control the listing and shut it down, it should have been them, but it wasn't. It was you. Uh, and the reason that they do it is very limited. They do it because they think there's evidence of fraud or they think that there needs to be a material disclosure by the company that hasn't been made. And that's done to protect the investor. You check none of those boxes here because you don't control the venue. You didn't know about any information that GameStop or any right. of these other stocks needed to put out. You don't have any reason to believe there's fraud that you've articulated. And you're certainly not protecting these people who've been living the dream of making money, especially at the expense of the big guys. So why should people believe you did this for the right reasons? Exactly. Like, why, why would anyone believe that they didn't, that they shut this whole thing down because that they, they weren't losing money in the situation? Well, we, we have no choice. We have to comply with all financial uh, requirements. And the SEC hasn't said you had to do this. Well, lots of brokers uh, have to uh, comply with these financial requirements, and See, he's like tripping up on. He has no idea what, how names. he's going to get himself uh, out of. It. He was the scapegoat. They're like, you're going to do this for us, and then you're going to get up on there and tell Chris Como to his face other that brokers this week have imposed that you didn't do this. And not speaking for other firms, but for Robinhood in particular, this isn't because there's. Uh, you know, deals happening with market makers we route to or market participants. But These then why are... did you allow people to keep selling? But this not is the buying? big thing right here. The reason that is so troubling to people is that they were making money buying the stock because they were against the short side. And so by enabling them to sell but not buy, it sounds like you were allowing the hedge funds. And again, one of them owns a piece of you. And they had a big short position. And that looks like a stinky conflict a stinky. that you didn't come out straight on from the start. Address that. Address that. Well, not, none of that had anything to do with our decision to do this. Again, this was... No, of course not. Oh, no, no. Well, we would never. Uh, that has nothing to do with us. Our billionaire backers that were losing money, they they just... they That's nothing to do. No, no. We definitely did it because we had to. Screw this guy and screw those billionaires. I'll see you in the next one.